So we know that with well-behaved preferences and smooth indifference curves, an interior bundle can only be optimal if the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line at this bundle. MRS must be equal to minus P1 over P2, where MRS is the slope of the indifference curve dx2 dx1, and minus P1 over P2 is the slope of the budget line. Okay, so let's prove this formally. The proof in itself is not that important. What is important is how we set up the optimization problem as a mathematical problem. To do this, we will assume that preferences may be represented by a utility function. Most well-behaved preferences can be represented by a utility function. So what the consumer wants to do is simply to find the bundle which maximizes her utility. Keep in mind that each indifference curve has an associated utility level, and even though utility functions are cardinal and we don't really care what this value is, by maximizing utility, we guarantee that she will reach the best possible indifference curve. So mathematically, she would like to maximize u of x1 comma x2. The maximization problem is two-dimensional in the sense that she needs to decide on two variables. She must decide on how much to consume of each good. This is only one part of the mathematical formulation because we have to remember that not all values of x1 and x2 are possible. The bundle must be affordable, therefore we add a constraint. We type st for such that the constraint is that the cost of the bundle, P1x1 plus P2x2, must be less than or equal to income. Since we are working with well-behaved preferences, we know that she will spend her entire income, so we can just as well write equal to M. So this is the mathematical problem that we solve in microeconomics when we find the optimal bundle. It is what's called a constrained optimization problem, we optimize the function of two variables, u, and we have one constraint. There are actually two hidden constraints here, since both x1 and x2 needs to be greater than or equal to zero. We know that this problem will have a unique solution, either an interior solution or a boundary solution. We can use the method of Lagrange to solve this constrained optimization problem. We create a new function called the Lagrangian, typically denoted by some sort of a fancy L. This will be a function of the two x variables. Some people also add the Lagrangian multiplier in this list, and it's determined by the function we wish is to optimize, which is our utility function. We do a minus, we do a lambda, which is the Lagrangian multiplier, we do a parenthesis, and in the parenthesis, we put the left-hand side of the constraint P1x1 plus P2x2 minus, and then we do the right-hand side. So this is the Lagrangian for our constrained optimization problem. To find the solution of a constrained optimization problem, we do the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x1. That's going to be, well, first we differentiate this with respect to x1, the u dx1. The then we have a minus lambda p1 x1, and the derivative of this with respect to x1 is minus lambda p1. This derivative needs to be zero. We have partial L with respect to x2, and that is similar type of argument, partial u, partial x2 minus, we have an x2 here, so we have a minus lambda p2 x2, and the derivative is lambda p2, that should be zero. The third equation is our budget line, p1 x1 plus p2 x2 equal to m, which we can also derive by setting the partial derivative of L with respect to lambda equal to zero. In any case, here are three equations and three unknowns, x1, x2, and lambda. P1, P2, and M are just constants. From the first equation, 
the partial derivative of u with respect to x1, well, that's what we call marginal utility 1. Move lambda p1 over to the other side, and we see that mu1 is lambda p1. mu2 is equal to lambda p2. Combine these two, and we see that if I do mu1 divided by mu2, then this is equal to mu1 is lambda p1, and mu2 is lambda p2, lambda cancels, and this is p1 over p2. This is our first order condition, and an optimal solution only needs to satisfy the first order condition if it's an interior solution. If I multiply both sides by minus 1, I have on the left minus mu1 over mu2, and that's precisely MRS. The slope of the indifference curve is minus the ratio of the marginal utilities. And on the right hand side, I get this one, which is precisely what we set out to prove. Using this equation and this equation, we will then be able to find the optimal solution, something we will talk more about in the following slides. Here is a summary. If we can represent well-behaved preferences with the smooth utility function u, then optimal choice can be described mathematically as the solution to a constrained optimization problem. The consumer wishes to maximize her utility by choosing x1 and x2. She faces a constraint, the cost of the bundle must be equal to her income. The Lagrangian for this problem is equal to the utility function minus lambda times p1x1 plus p2x2 minus m. From this, we can derive the first order condition that an interior optimal bundle must satisfy. It is mu1 divided by mu2 must be equal to p1 over p2. Since mu1 over mu2 is equal to minus mrs, we see that MRS must be equal to minus P1 over P2 at the optimal choice. If preferences are well behaved, then there will be at most one bundle on the budget line satisfying the first order condition, and this bundle will be the optimal bundle. If there is no bundle on the budget line satisfying the first order condition, then the optimal bundle must be a boundary bundle. Finding the optimal bundle in this case is simple. We simply evaluate the utility for the two boundary bundles on the budget line. 